Hey, what's up guys? So today I want to take you through programming a complex five axis part with Cloud NC's Cam Assist. But I don't want to show you just how fast we can throw some toolpath on there, which we are going to do by the way. But instead, I want to show you some really cool features that Cam Assist has that puts you, the programmer, in the driver's seat so you have more control over what the outcome is going to be. So here's the part we're going to be programming. As you can see, it's fairly complex. It has a lot of pockets, bosses, holes, different fillets, different areas. It's got a lot going on, even some undercuts. But probably the most complex part about this is, as you can tell, we have modeled in where we're going to tab this part. Now, I'm going to be honest, I would not have thought that Cam Assist could handle a part like this. It's actually pretty big, too. The stock is 15 inches long and about an inch and a half thick. So it's a fairly big part. Now I have went ahead and set up my file. So I've brought in my vices and I have that in my setup. And I've also created some tools. So if I open my toolkit here, shut this off, you can see I've created a lot of the tools that I want to use. Now that is as far as I've taken this. You might notice that I am using SolidCam here. That is going to be a big announcement probably next month that Cam Assist is now going to be in SolidCam. So at the time of this filming, it is still in development mode, but they are getting super close at releasing this to the public. So all you SolidCam users, be watching. So first, let's do a little speed run. So I'm going to start out exactly where I'm at, and we're going to see how fast we can get to the point of putting Toolpath on this part. Now, I know I said earlier that we wasn't going to do that, but that's exactly what we're going to do. So then we can go back and see some of these features that Cam Assist is going to give us to make this a lot better of an output. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just run Cam Assist. Now, when Cam Assist first opens up, it's going to be in the assess phase where it's going to look at the model and see if it sees any issues right off the bat. Now, we're actually going to come back and talk about some of these in just a minute. But for now, we're just going to go through this. So I'm going to go to prepare. And since this is a five axis part, I'm going to tell it that I'm going to be in a three plus two scenario. So I'm going to actually pick the directions that I want to machine from. So I've picked my machine, which is a medium speed, medium power machine. And I'm going to use those session tools that I have brought in to my cam file. Next, I'm going to select the directions that I want to rough from, which is this front and back. And I'm going to select the directions that I want to finish from, which is front, back, these two angles here. We're going to talk about that in more detail in just a minute. So once I've selected that, I'm going to go over here to the advanced mode and make sure that all of this is selected like I want. Uh, I'm going to go to parameters. I'm going to select undercuts, make sure that's on. And I'm going to use, use AI-driven cutting parameters for my feeds and speeds. All right. And that's all I'm going to select. Now I'm going to go run a cam assist. So now it's going to start analyzing the model and start putting the toolpath on. All right. So once it gets done calculating, if we're fine with everything, at this point, we hit send to cam package and it starts applying all of our toolpath for us to calculate. So now I want to take you through some of those features that Cam Assist has that helps you as the machinist in order to get the outcome that you want before you spend a lot of time editing the toolpath. I can see right here on this page that I have some detected issues. And if we click on this first one, we see unmachinable surfaces. So what that's telling me is it has found things that it thinks that it can't machine. And if we look, it's these fillets on the inside of this pocket. It's this face down here, this face on this side, and this bottom face down inside this hole. So the reason why we're getting an error like unmachinable surfaces is because it's trying to give you exactly what you want. It's trying to machine the entire surface. So if there's any area that it can't completely machine, it's going to tell you that, that I can't completely machine that. That doesn't mean it's not going to try or that it's not going to rough it or mostly machine it. It's just telling you that I can't machine it completely. And that's exactly what we're seeing right here. And the reason why we're seeing it, let's say on this bottom face here, is because we have this sharp internal corner. 
Now Cam Assist knows that I can't machine this, so it's telling me that I'm not gonna get full cleanup here. So if I look at our next detected issue, I see it says surface requires splitting. Now it's highlighting this boss here. Let me fly this out so you guys can see it a little better. So it's important to note that when Cam Assist sees a surface, it wants to machine that full surface from one direction. Now we can tell as machinists that how I would do this part is I can go all the way around this boss at this floor on this side. I can also drop in and machine this slot and then I can flip it over and machine around the boss on this back side. Now Cam Assist doesn't see that because it's seeing this full surface. And what it's telling me is that in order for it to machine this surface properly, I need to split it in the way that I want to machine it. Anything, anytime you see something like this, it means that there's probably something obstructing it and it can't machine that full surface from one direction. So we'll address that in just a little bit. The next issue is it says insufficient usable tool length. Now this one's really cool. It just so happens to be on this stock right here. Now, I don't really care about this because it's excess stock, but if I did, let's say this was something on our part that really mattered, what it's telling me is the tools that I gave it inside the session, it does not have one with enough flute length in order to cut this, either flute length or a reduced shank. And I can see right here the recommended tools that it, it thinks it could use if I were to adjust them or I can bring in a brand new tool. So if I click on this tool here, I didn't assign any names. That's why you're just seeing end mill and bullnose mill and stuff like that. But if I go to edit tool, what I could do is if I was using the library on the cloud, I could actually change those dimensions right here in this page. If I go to continue, I see my depth of cut maximum right here. I could change that and just hit continue and then done. And now it would be able to use that tool in order to cut this feature. But since I'm using the session tools, what I would need to do is I would have to close out Cam Assist, change it in my toolkit, and then open this back up and rerun it. Now, what I like to do here is if I'm doing that with session tools, I can use this edit tool button to see which tool numbers that it is trying to use. So I see tool 21. Another one that it says it could probably use is tool nine. And I could go through these and see what all tools that it's, it thinks it can try to use, or I can bring in a whole new one. So we'll address that in just a second as well. The next one is whole unmachinable. Now what it's doing is it's seeing this, that this large hole here is a hole but what it's telling me is it can't use traditional hole machining techniques in order to machine this hole, or I have not given it a suitable tool to use. So instead, what it's gonna do is it's gonna rough it out and finish it just as it would like a profile or a pocket, something like that. So it's gonna rough it, probably use a contour to finish it. And it's not gonna use those hole making strategies. And the last one is really just a warning it says pre-finished surface. And as you notice, all of the outside edges are highlighted. That's because I modeled this the same size as my stock. And it's just saying, hey, just so you know, these are the same size so, as your stock, so we're not going to machine that. So I'm gonna close this out and I'm gonna open up a model that I've addressed some of these issues with and we're gonna see how the output is a little bit different. So I'm gonna close this file and I'm gonna open up a new one. So the first thing I wanna address here is the surface requires splitting error. Now remember it was this outside face right here. So what I've done is I have split this at these different floor levels. So I wanna go on the back side first because it's easier to see because this this floor goes all the way across. So all I did was I took this outside surface and I split it all the way across right here at this floor. So now it knows that it can machine all the way around this at this level, 
Then it can drop in and machine it at this level through this slot. But I'm also gonna need to do that on this opposite side. But now on this side, you can see I have two different levels. So I need to split it at both of those levels. So at first I split it at this top one all the way across and at the top of this fillet right here. So by doing that, we should not get this error message again and it should machine that in a much better way. The next thing I've done is inside my toolkit, one of the tools that it said it could possibly use was tool eight. So what I did is I highlighted tool eight here and I changed the cutting length of my tool to something that was suitable to cut that face that it, uh, it couldn't reach. And that face was 33 millimeters, so I just made my cutting length 35. And that's just to get the point across that we shouldn't get that error message now when we run cam assist. So now that I've made these changes, now I'm gonna open this back up and run cam assist again. Now what I do wanna point out is when we first pull up cam assist, when we're on the uh, assess page, we do see some of those issues pop up. Now, this is only looking at the model itself. It's not thinking of the tool path that it's putting on there, the tools that you've, you're selected. I haven't got to that point yet. So you're not gonna see everything that might be wrong or it might flag as an issue. So it is helpful to just not even get to that point yet. And I do see some things right off the bat that if I wanna address, I can just go ahead and close out and, and do. And one of those being that surface needs to be split. It would pop up right here. And as you can see, I don't see it right now. So if I go to prepare, now I skipped over this earlier and I do wanna address it here. This is part of one of those features that I said that gives you, the programmer, a little bit more control of how you wanna approach a part. So whenever I'm using a three plus two method, I personally like to use user define so I have more control about exactly where I want to attack this part from. Now, when I do that, I, I have to tell it what directions I, I'm allowing it to machine from. Now, Cam Assist has got a new feature that has a checkbox here that says same direction for roughing and finishing. So if you want those to be the same, if you want to attack it, every angle that I can finish from and rough from, if you want those to be the same, you can just select that here. Now all I have to do is select my machining directions. Now in this case, I say front and back. If I did that, it's going to do all the roughing and all the finishing from those two directions and that is it. Or whatever direction I select. But let's say I wanted to separate the roughing and the finishing. So I can uncheck this and now you see it's separated these out. Now if I go into finish machining directions, I can say, okay, I wanna finish from the back, the front, but also wanna finish from this angle. Maybe I wanna finish from this angle. And maybe I want to finish this tapered face right here looking straight down on it. So I wanna select it as well. So now when I hit confirm, you can see I'm finishing from five different directions and only roughing from two. So this is allowing me to have a lot more control over how I wanna process this part rather than just say, hey, here's the part, program it. So now when I go to run cam assist, I should see a little bit different output here and a fewer of those issues detected. Okay, so now we just got done calculating. As you can see, the total faces is 720, where it was 710 earlier. So that's those extra faces that we created there. And we also don't see some of the errors that we were seeing before, which was surface require splitting and the insufficient tool length. So there's one last thing that we can do before we send it to the cam package to further customize the output that we're getting. And that is when we go over to the program tab. So here, I'm not gonna see the tool path because obviously I haven't calculated yet, but I can see each individual tool path that it's gonna try to put on and what it's looking at to machine. Now what I like to do is first look at any tool path that it thinks is gonna be excessively long and there might be a problem there. More than that, I like to come down to the bottom of the roughing strategies because typically what you'll see is when you get into rest roughing, you might see a lot of inefficiencies there. So if I click on this last one, I can see it's using a three millimeter end mill. It's only gonna take six seconds, but I should get a little preview of what this is trying to cut. And yeah, I can see right there. 
So it obviously is seeing some type of stock that needs to be rest machined there. Now, the reason why you're seeing stuff like this is because Cam Assist is trying to give you exactly what you asked for. So I told it to leave 10 thousandths of stock on the floors and the walls. So it's trying to give me exactly 10 thousandths of stock on those features. So we know as machinists that sometimes that's just a little excessive. If there's a little bit of excess stock here or there, it's not a big deal, unless it's a lot, obviously. But I can tell you right now that more than likely what this is cutting is probably basically nothing. So what I can do is just turn this off. Now it's not gonna output that. And I don't have to worry about that later after everything's been calculated. So if I work my way up here, I can see this one, I don't even see where it's at. It's probably so tiny. So I'm just gonna cut it off as well. And probably this last one, I can see, okay, it's probably doing a little rest roughing on top of this. Um, some over here where it's not really matter. So I'm gonna cut that one off as well. Now I'm gonna leave all the others. Um, but one more thing that I wanna show you, if I go down to some of the freeform finishing, so some of the surface milling, I'm probably trying to finish this stock here. Now I know that this is stock, but how I've described it in this part is I've made all of this as my part instead of avoidance geometry. Now, what that means is it's gonna to try to finish it as well. And I know I don't wanna do that. So if I click on the main freeform operation here, I'm gonna see everything that it's trying to machine with these operations. And I can see that it's gonna to try to surface mill this relief cut here and also try to surface mill the relief cut on the opposite side. I know I don't wanna do that because it's just excess stock, right? So what I can do is find the tool path that's doing that and possibly turn it off. So if I search down through here, like that one right there. The reason why I wanted to show you this is, is if it was only cutting what I don't wanna cut right here, then I could just turn it off. But maybe I wanna leave this one on because this tool path is also trying to cut some of these chamfers over here as well. So maybe I don't completely kill this tool path. Maybe I let it calculate, but just make a mental note that I'm gonna have to go in later and unselect this surface here and only finish the features that are on the part. So once I'm satisfied with this, I've basically done all that I think I need to do. And at that point, I'm ready to send it to the cam package. Once I do, cam assist closes out and it starts building out my tool path to calculate. All right, so now it has thrown out all the tool path that it needs. So now it's time to calculate all of this and go through it step by step to make sure it's exactly what I want. And we're actually gonna do that in the next video. We're gonna go through this tool path, adjust what we wanna adjust, and we're actually gonna machine this part on the machine. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss that video. If you like this one, leave us a like and a comment below. We'll see you on the next one.